Well, hello, guys, and welcome to Virtual Vacation Bible School, day number four. And so we do have a quick update. So remember we said that day number four, which was Thursday of Vacation Bible School, was going to be a live Zoom session. But as you can see, we're not having a live Zoom session. We're actually having a recorded session like we did the other days. And so remember day one, remember we talked about determination. Day two, remember we talked about obedience. Day three, remember we talked about hard work. And today we are talking about leadership. And so today is our final recording. So if you just now joined us today and you haven't seen the other videos, please again, go ahead and watch the other videos before you watch this one here as we'll be talking about leadership. And so as, as we've been mentioning throughout the other videos, I know that uh, you know we actually don't have um, the nice student guide, but we will be showing you some things on the screen here. So again, we certainly welcome you to Vacation Bible School. Let's go ahead and um, open up a, pray, a word of prayer for our elementary group, Vacation Bible School, and then we'll, we'll get into our lesson for today. God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for keeping us. We thank you for covering us. We pray that you will help us to get a clear understanding of leadership as you will teach us through the Bible and the book of Judges about the judge named Deborah. And so, Father, we thank you even now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So as we've done for uh, the last few sessions, we've always asked, have your Bible ready. One of the great things is um, we've been using this, these times together to not only show you different scriptures in the Bible, but also as a, a guide to getting familiar with the different scriptures in the Bible. And how often do we actually open up our Bible nowadays because maybe we have an iPad, a tablet, a phone, a computer, so many other things. So we want to use this opportunity as a, as a moment, you know, for you to be able to actually open up your Bible. So as we've done many, uh, all the other videos, I want you to go ahead. If you don't have your Bible, I want you to pause the video, get your Bible, get a pen, get a paper, get a pencil, whatever it is that you want to write with. But you can pause the video now, go get your things, come back, and we'll continue on. All right. Did you get your Bible? So hopefully you have your Bible, a uh, piece of paper, pencil, so that we can walk through the activities as well today. All right. So if you didn't get those things, go ahead and pause it so that you can get those things now. So as I mentioned, we were going to be talking um, today about um, a woman named Deborah. And so Deborah was a judge in the Bible. And so a lot of times uh, we don't hear too much about different women in the Bible. So I'm really excited to be able to share this lesson with you about Deborah. So again, our topic today is leadership and it's coming from the book of Judges, chapter four, verse four through 16. So we may or may not read through the whole thing, we'll see. But let's go ahead and find in our Bible, the book of Judges, chapter four, verse four through 16. Now, the book of Judges is in the Old Testament. In fact, we've already taken a look at the book of Joshua. Look at the book of Joshua. Judges is right after Joshua. And so uh, one of our lessons, we talked about obedience. And we talked about how the children of Israel, God told them to walk around the walls of Jericho. Remember that? Six times. And then on the seventh day, walk around seven times. And on the seventh time, uh, the trumpet would sound and they would you know, make a loud shout and the walls came down. And we were looking at Joshua. Well, now we're fast forwarding. And now we're looking at the book of Judges. So Joshua now, this is many years later. So he's, he's dead. He's no longer alive. And so now the children of Israel, they need rulers. They need leaders. They didn't have kings at this point in the Bible. As you look a little bit later on, they'll have kings such as King David, that I'm sure you've heard about. But at this point in the book of Judges, the children of Israel, did not have a king. And so who was their leader? Who was going to give them direction? Who was going to help lead them in battle if there was enemies coming against them? And this is where judges come. Have you ever heard of a man named Samson? Maybe you heard the story of Samson and Delilah. Remember Samson had this long hair and he was very strong, but when his hair got cut, he became very weak. Well, Samson was a judge as well. And so Today, we're not going to talk about Samson, but we're going to talk about a woman named Deborah, who was a judge over Israel. 
again, a judge is more of a ruler um, to give direction. A lot of the judges also had supernatural ability from God, such as Samson, or they had the ability to be able to hear what God was saying and be able to speak it to the people. What I really like about Deborah is that, again, you don't hear too much about women in the Bible. Or if you do hear about women, you don't hear about them being in leadership roles, being leaders. But here it is, we see Deborah is a strong leader. And this is where we're looking at this in the book of Judges, chapter four, verse four through 16. So I'm going to pull the scripture up. And the title of this one here, even though it's around leadership, is called The Truth, um, God's Word. Let me actually uh, scroll back up here. Um, the good leader needs, a good leader needs, that's really the, the subject topic of this one. So leadership, a good leader uh, needs. So the truth of God's word. So let's take a look at this here. So let me, I'm, I'm going to kind of walk through um, this scripture for a moment and kind of paraphrase for it. So before we look at the scripture, let's look at the vocabulary words on the right hand side. So again, a judge, a person in authority, who settles disagreements. And so what they would do is the, the children of Israel, they would come to the judges like a lot and ask, just like a judge, right? Just like if uh, someone uh, maybe did something wrong against another person, then they get maybe what we're called lawyers, people to represent them, then they would go before a judge if they needed to, so that the judge can make a decision of who's right, who's wrong, and what's gonna happen. Well, these judges in the Bible somewhat did the same thing as well. A prophet, Prophet is a man or a woman who tells the people what God wants them to know. And then, of course, the last one is summoned, called or requested to come. And so let's look at this Bible story. And I know you have the Bible in front of you. Verse 4, chapter 4 of Judges, verse 4. It says, Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, judge Israel at that time. It says that she would sit under the palm of Deborah. I want you guys to remember these different things that we're talking about here because we're going to ask some questions a little bit later. So she would sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites would go to her for judgment. One day she sent for Barak, the son of Abinol, Abinol, who lived in Kadesh in the land of Naphtali. She said to him, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you. Call out. 10,000 warriors from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun at Mount Tabor. And I will call out Sisera, commander of Jabin's army, along with his chariots and warriors to the Kashan River. There, I will give you victory over him. Listen to what Barak says. Barak told her, I will go, but only if you will go with me. And then she replies, very well, I will go with you. But you will receive no honor in this venture, for the Lord's victory over Sisera will be at the hands of a woman. So Deborah went, to, went with Barak to Kadesh. And then at Kadesh, Barak called together the tribes of Zebulun and Naphtali, and that was 10,000 warriors, and they went up with him. Deborah also went with him. Now Heber, the Canaanite, a descendant of Moses' brother-in-law, Hobab, had moved away from the other members of his tribe. And he pitched a tent by the oak of Zenanim near Kadesh. When Sisera was told that Barak, son of Abanon, had gone up to Mount Tabor, he called for all 900 of his iron chariots and all of his warriors, and they marched from Parasheth, Hagoyim, to the Kashan River. Then Deborah said to Barak, get ready. This is the day the Lord will give you victory over Sisera, for the Lord is marching ahead of you. So Barak led his 10,000 warriors down the slopes of Mount Tabor into battle. When Barak attacked, the Lord threw Sisera and all his chariots and warriors into a panic. Sisera leaped down from his chariot and escaped on foot, and Barak chased the chariots and the enemy's army all the way to Harasheth, Hagayim, killing all of Sisera's warriors. Not a single one was left alive. And it stops there. But what happens after that is, so, so remember, Sisera, he's a commander of the army that's going against the army of Israel, okay? So he's an enemy. So he's a commander. So it shows that he gets off his ch uh, chariot and he runs. And what he does is runs 
into a tent of someone that's, you know, in that area. So he's in this person's tent, a female. He's in a woman's tent. And he tells the woman pretty much that he needs to hide there. And so you know, the woman, she, so she agrees and everything. And he says, I'm going to hide underneath the rug. So there's a rug inside the tent. He said, I'm going to hide underneath the rug. And he says, if anybody comes to your tent and asks, you know, did, did Cicero run in here? You tell him no. So he asked her, did she have anything to drink? And she says, I can give you some milk. So he, she gives him some milk. He drinks the milk and he goes to sleep. While he's sleeping, the woman who's supposed to be helping him hide, she kills him. And so remember, earlier we talked about that Deborah said that um, Barak was not going to have victory, that victory was going to be given at a woman's hand. And so that's, that's your situation right there. That's what happens. A woman actually kills the commander of the army that was coming against Israel. And even though Barak was the commander of Israel army, he wasn't the one to be able to get victory. Victory came at the hand of a woman. And so again, this is an amazing story. So um, Deborah, it's one of the uh, different Old Testament stories. W one of the big things is about leadership. Did Barak show strong leadership? I mean, I think it's good that Barak, you know, he said, I don't want to go into battle unless you go with us, Deborah, because he trusted in her. That shows a lot about Deborah. The commander of the army said, I'm, I don't want to go unless you go with us. He had that much trust in Deborah as the judge or the ruler at that time, giving them counsel and guidance, that he didn't want to go unless she went with them. That meant that he, he really had to trust Deborah. Leadership is about trust. And so you may be wondering, well, am I a leader? You are a leader. Have you ever had anybody follow you? Maybe it was at school. Maybe it's different activities. Has anybody ever followed your lead? You know, some people say we're, you know, we're born leaders, um, and, but it is a lot of skill and everything that you have to develop in regards to leadership. But you are a leader and you have to see yourself that way as well, even as we're looking at the book of Judges. So let's take a look at some of these different activities. I want to scroll down a little bit and look at this page where it says breaking it down. It says, many times following good leadership has helped to save lives. In this case, or the case of Cicera, remember that was the leader of the enemy army, following bad leadership can cost lives, right? Israel was victorious in battle because Deborah followed God's leadership and Barak followed her leadership. This is a really good point. If you're following someone, who are they following? Somebody says, follow me. You'll find out, well, who are you following? Because you're following somebody's direction. And even if it's somebody you can't see, are they following God's direction? Or are they following something, someone else's direction? And so in this case here, Deborah was following God's direction. And Barak, who was the commander of the army of Israel, trusted in her so much, probably because of his confidence in her, because she had a relationship with God. God wants each of his people to experience victory in their lives. However, it will mean following his leadership. So the question is, do you trust in God's leadership for your life? Think about that, right? And so let's continue on for a moment. Let's look at our activity before we look at our master memory. All right, so this is where your, your uh, pencil and paper comes in, all right? So all of these different questions are goes along with what we just read in Judges 4. So if you want to refer back to that, if you still have your Bible open, you can certainly do so. So the first answer is given for you. So I don't know if you've ever watched Jeopardy, but Jeopardy, you know, you, you pretty much choose the answer and you, and you have to come up and, and you're, or you choose the question, but you have to answer it in the form of a question. And that's what we're going to do. So below are the answers from the lesson. Write, if you have your piece of paper, you can put your, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on your paper. And if you need time for that, again, you can hit pause. The first one has been done for you. So the first one says the name Cicera. That's the answer. And so the question would be, you know, who was the commander of Jabin's army, right? So let's look at this next one here. So the next one says 10,000 men. So in the scripture that we read in Judges 4, 
what what is it about ten thousand men? There was a mention of ten thousand men, but who were these ten thousand men? Think about that for a moment, and if you need to go back and look at your scripture, you certainly can. So again, ten thousand men in the form of a question. What is the answer for that? All right. So if you said that was the amount of of men that Barak um, had taken into battle, you're correct. So that's the amount of men that was in the army underneath the commander Barak. All right. The next one is Deborah. So again, we, we talked a lot about Deborah. So if you remember this name, in the form of a question, what would be the answer that you were right on this line? All right. So if you said, who was the judge of Israel? You're correct. So remember, she was judge and prophet. It was a prophet. Prophet, again, is one that can foresee or, or hear from God and also see into the future as well. But a prophet, those things come from God. Remember, she, she heard from God and she was able to even tell Barak, you know, hey, this victory is not going to come at your hand. It's going to come at the hand of a woman. And she was right. OK. All right. The next one. Cruel oppression from Sisera. Number four. You want to look at your scripture and, and find what would be the answer in the form of a question. Cruel oppression from Sisera. All right, so this one might have been a, a tough one um, as well, but really what happened is, remember Jabin's army, so Sisera is the, it was the commander of Jabin's army, and so pretty much the Israelites had to fight this army because they were receiving cruel oppression from Sisera, who was the commander of that army. All right, the next one says, I'll go if you go with me. I'll go if you go with me. All right. All right. So who said that? So that's what uh, Barak said, right? So Deborah came to Barak, the commander of Israel, and said, hey, you know, we need to go into battle. He said, I'll go if you go with me. So that's what Barak said to Deborah. All right. This was early in the, in the scripture in, in Judges 4. Palm of Deborah. What, what is it about that? Palm of Deborah. And we're not talking about palm, like palm in your hand, palm of Deborah. All right. So remember, if you could need to pause these and go look back, you certainly can. But palm of Deborah is where the people would come to Deborah to meet her so that she can judge. All right. So where did the people meet with Deborah would be the answer. Where did the people meet with Deborah? All right. And then finally, a woman. All right. So we know Deborah was a woman. But there's something that she said about a woman, and I've said it as well, a woman. What would be the answer in a form of a question for that? All right, so remember, Deborah told Barak, you know, the victory will come at the hand of a woman. And so who did Deborah say would get the glory for defeating, defeating Sisera? And remember, she said that was going to be at the hand of a woman. Awesome. All right. It's not often that we look at uh, the book of Judges, some of these different ones, um, but really good, strong stories in here about trusting God. And this one here is about leadership. So I want to scroll back up and look at our mastery, mastery memory verse. It's from Psalm chapter five, verse eight. Remember, MLT stands for New Living Translation. It says, lead me in the right path, O Lord, or my enemies will conquer me. Make your way plain for me to follow. I love that. Make your way plain for me to follow. There's nothing wrong with asking God to help lead us as we go throughout any situation. So I'll tell you, as you guys are getting ready for this, this school year and, and your teachers are still wondering, you know, is it going to be virtual? Is it going to be in person? Asking God, Lord, I mean, look, here's a great prayer. Make your way plain for me to follow. You know, help me Help me to see your way, the right way. Help me to see the way as I do schoolwork, as I engage with friends this school year, whatever the case may be. God, help make your way plain for me to follow. All right. So as we've done many times, I want to go ahead and close us out in prayer that's on the screen and then share something else with you. And as we've also done, we'll wrap it up 
with our wonderful video as well. So if you don't mind, we can pray this prayer that you see on the screen together. Ready? Read. Dear Lord Jesus, lead me in your way. Make it clear so that I may be a good leader for others to follow. In Jesus' name, amen. Amazing. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, that's our lesson for today. Um, now, I, as we've done at the end of every one of our um, sessions this week, uh, again, you may be joining this session for the first time, uh, you know, never gave your life unto Jesus Christ, never asked God to come into your life to save you. Maybe you've never done that before. And so what we want to do, and we've been doing this during all of our different sessions, is really walking you through, if you've never done this before, the ABCs of salvation. And what do we mean by that? The A and the ABCs of salvation is ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins. And so we do believe that every person, when you're born on this earth, you're born into sin. You're born separated from God. And so it's Jesus who brings us back together. And then also the next part to be is believe Jesus died on the cross for you. And not only that, believe that Jesus was raised from the dead for you. And then finally, call on Jesus to save you. And so if you've never prayed a prayer asking Jesus to come into your life as your Lord and your Savior, I want to go ahead and lead you in this prayer today. And, and we're following the ABCs of salvation. So if you've never prayed this prayer, I'm going to pray it and you repeat after me. The important thing is that we believe it in our heart. We believe it in our heart. So if you've never prayed this prayer, I ask you to pray it with me now. Dear God, Forgive me for my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe that Jesus was raised from the dead for me. I ask you now to save me. Come into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. So again, if you just prayed that prayer for the first time, um, a simple prayer, but if you prayed it for the first time, let your parents uh, and, and let your guardians know. Uh, let them know that you prayed this prayer for the first time. And, uh, and also, you can reach out to us, you know, uh, reach out to me and, or reach out to anybody that's part of our staff and let us know so that we can celebrate with you. Also, we have what's called the ABCs of Salvation. And so it's just a little four page uh, booklet that you can look at that really walks through uh, what does it mean to be saved? You know, it, it just really break it down and we can certainly either get this sent to you or, or have your parents or guardians um, to have that picked up. What a great time. So I hope that you've been able to join us all week for our uh, virtual lessons. I hope that you've been able to learn um, some certain things. You know, we talked about determination. Uh, remember, uh, determination was Zacchaeus, the man that ran and climbed up into the tree, and he wanted to be with Jesus. He was determined. He didn't allow anyone to get in his way of getting there to Jesus. I remember we've also talked about obedience. Um, you know, we were uh, talking about Joshua and how they walked around the walls, and God told them, you know, don't, don't take anything from uh, Jericho, and someone did take it, and it really caused some bad things to happen. And, you know, until that person came forward. Uh, and then we, we talked about hard work. We talked about Nehemiah, who wanted to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and how it wasn't an easy task, but he stuck to it. And then, of course, today we talked about leadership. We were talking about the judge named Deborah uh, that, uh, leading us into leadership. So an amazing time. Again, you know, these booklets that we were not able to get to you in person. Again, if you want one of these student guides, we can get it to you please just let us know how we can get it over to you. So as we have done at the end of all of our different sessions, we've done our little video. Again, you don't have to stay on and uh, watch the whole video uh, unless you really want to, uh, but we'll go ahead and play the video now. Thank you guys for joining us. Have a great rest of your day. Okay, baby, we're here. Now, I know this is a new school and all, but remember, God has not given us a spirit of fear, right? 
Yes, Dad, I know. But I just don't know anybody here, and I want to make a difference for Christ. I do, but I just don't know if I can. Oh, baby, just remember, in Jesus, you got this. Okay, Dad, if you say so. In the Bible, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Then if God said it, I have to believe it. That means in Jesus, we got this, we got this, we got this. So what happens if a bully comes to confront me? Man, in Jesus, you got this. Okay, so what if it seems like I just don't fit in? Man, I told you, in Jesus, we got this. Here we go, y'all. Every step I take, let's go, let's every go. move I make, Come on. I never sleep or wait. Yeah. There is no mistake. Uh -huh. My God is in the midst. It just can't exist. That's right. With Jesus, I can't miss. With Jesus, we let's go. Every step I take, every move I make, yeah. whether asleep or wait. Let's go, let's there go. There is no mistake. Yeah. My God is in the midst. Uh -huh. It just can't exist. Ever been in a situation that says you just can't win? The enemy harassing me, I need me a super friend. Then he realized Jesus was there all alone. Now he got the power to do all these, cause he makes you strong. Yo, take a look in your Bible. You see who the sun sets free is free indeed. But take heed. The enemy will still try to foul you out when you shoot your three. The game is on the line. You're out of time. You take the shot and you think you missed. But it's your time to shine from the line. Jesus just in time. With the event. With Jesus, there's absolutely nothing you cannot do. You cannot do. Because every hour your superpower is the greater one inside of you. Now rise up and take this amazing message all around the world. You agree. Because, you know, after all, with great power comes great responsibility. Every step I let's take, go, let's every go. move I make, whether asleep or uh, there is no mistake. Uh -huh. My God is in the midst. It just can't exist. Yes, right. With Jesus, I can't miss. With Jesus, let's go. Every step I take, every move I make, yeah. whether asleep or wait, let's go, let's there go. is no mistake. Yeah. My God is in Okay, so how was your day? You were right, Dad. It was great. Because with Jesus, we both got this.